Okay, so as I say, I'd like to touch on six, six points uh, today. Uh, three of them are short term and three of them are longer term. The three short term ones are the impact of the exchange rate, uh, the UK economy itself, and the implications of Brexit for the European and wider global economy. The three longer term ones are what the post-Brexit trade relationship between the EU27 and the UK will look like. Uh, fourth point is FDI issues, and the final issue relates to the general disintegration point uh, about, um, about the remaining 27, which I think is now a non-negligible risk. So uh, some, 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 little, some few thoughts on that. Okay, so over the past, on the exchange rate, over the past 12 hours, the movements in sterling have been some of the biggest in that currency's long history. Uh, we know in Ireland that our exports to the UK are sensitive to movements in the euro sterling exchange rate. Uh, we've seen that since sterling started to uh, fall in value last autumn. Irish exports, goods exports, have uh, fallen over the past nine months, eight, nine months or so. Uh, given the uh, risk to sterling and the, the possibility of a, of, a, of a much more significant correction, that is a clear downside risk for the, uh, for the Irish economy. One of the points that I haven't heard mentioned this morning is the size of, the, of Britain's current account deficit. One of the best indicators or predictors of what happens to currencies and currency movements are, are not, don't lend themselves to, to predictions, but one of the good things to watch is the size of a country's current account deficit. That's the difference between the amount uh, a country earns from the rest of the world uh, and the amount it pays out. Britain has been running one of the biggest current account deficits in the post-Second World War era uh, right now. Uh, those sort of deficits tend when a country runs a large deficit like that and it has a floating exchange rate, uh, they can often lead to big movements. So there is an underlying overpricing of sterling in recent times and uh, that is a significant additional risk factor along with the, with the Brexit shock. Okay, moving uh, on to the UK economy itself. Uh, it's been slowing in, in recent months. The, the Bank of England has attributed that to uncertainty over the Brexit issue. Just purely from a, a, a numerical perspective, if one in four British companies were to postpone their investment de decisions in plant machinery premises uh, for six months, that would just be that in itself would be enough to push the UK economy into a technical recession. Uh, given the uncertainties that have now arisen around the, the, the Brexit picture, uh, it's very easy to see uh, British companies pulling back from from investment. If only for the short term, it could be longer, but certainly in the shorter term. Up to now, UK consumers have been quite resilient, but if there were to be a, an investment recession, it's easy to see how that could spill over into the uh, consumer side of the economy, which is, is much bigger. So it's very easy to see uh, a, a more sh sharper downturn of the UK economy and or uh, a UK recession. If we were to put the two things together, a weaker sterling and a recession in the UK, Clearly, there are big implications for, for the Irish economy via, uh, by those, um, as a result of those two things happening together. Uh, what about the impact, the third point, the impact of, of Brexit on, on Europe and uh, global recession? Uh, I think it's important to say that big financial market crashes and movements don't always feed into the real economy. We saw that in Black Monday back in the 80s, for example. So it's, it's possible uh, that there won't be as big an impact as maybe some people uh, believe. The European economy, the recovery has been fragile. Uh, it is also perfectly possible that it will, will have a, an impact. My hunch is that it will have quite a small impact on, on the European, uh, European economy in the short term. Uh, okay, moving on to the longer-term uh, issues around, uh, for, first of all, in, in terms of EU-UK uh, relations. It's important, and I think it's already been said, is the extreme complexity of negotiating trade deals. The, 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 the current World Trade Organization, the Doha Round, has been going on for 15 years. Uh, now, it's not going anywhere, but it's, it, it, that just gives an indication of how long these things can take. The EU-Canada uh, free trade agreement uh, that, that has recently been, been concluded took many years, and that's been considered as a model, as a potential model for, for, for EU-UK relations. So these things take a lot of time, so there's, there's, there's huge uncertainty about it. It's, it's also worth repeating, and I think it has been said, that we, we can have no special deal. 
There is no such thing as a bilateral trade deal between a, a member of the EU and a third country. So there, there won't be special deals, and you still hear people say that, that it'll be all right, we'll work something out, there'll be a special deal between Ireland and, and the UK. That can only happen if we leave, uh, the, the, if we leave the European Union. So no, no bilateral uh, agreement. So th there will be almost certainly additional barriers to trade between the EU and the UK. The, the only question is, will they be big ones or will they be small? And I think it's fair to say that economists, while, while we don't agree on, on much, one of the things that is universally agreed on is the higher the barriers, the more barriers you, you have to commercial activity, the less commercial activity uh, you get. Uh, so that is a, um, that, that is a, a very clear longer term downside. Um, and there's also the issue in terms of those negotiations, it, there, there will be no desire uh, to, or there will certainly be a concern about appearing to give Britain the best of both worlds, being both in, uh, out, of, out, of, uh, uh, out of the EU, but retaining all of the, the upsides in terms of market access. Uh, and just that, that point that it, it has been said that, you know, Ireland has always traded with the UK. Of course it has, but it's a, it's a little like saying, and there's nothing to worry about, that's a little like saying that there's always been climate change and we don't have to worry about climate change. It is a very significant uh, risk to, uh, to, to Ireland. The fifth longer term issue is the FDI piece. Um, this is the only, to my mind, the solitary upside from Britain <coughs> leaving in terms of FDI being attracted, uh, uh, being, coming, coming to Ireland. Both British companies that service the European market from the UK, uh, potential that they could move part of their operations, the, U, the, the EU part of their operations to, to Ireland, as well as non-British uh, non companies. Britain has the largest stock of foreign direct investment in Europe by a considerable distance. Uh, only a small portion of that moving to Ireland would have a major impact on, on our economy. But it's also, it hasn't been said as much, that equally if there are high barriers to trade between uh, Ireland and the UK, that will also create an incentive for companies based here who service the UK market to jump those barriers by shifting their operations or part of their operations to the UK. So there's a downside FDI threat as well in terms of existing FDI here moving uh, to the UK to make sure that they are behind whatever tariff barriers or, or trade barriers that come into existence. Uh, finally, the issue of disintegration. When, when, whenever we think about risk, we always think about the probability and the impact. Now, even if the probability of the, the single market and the euro were to disappear, even if that pro those probabilities are low, the, the impact is extremely high. In terms of the euro, we, we know that from the 2010-2012 period where, where there, there was a risk the currency would, uh, would, would, would cease to exist, and the impact on the real economy in Europe was disastrous, uh, led to a protracted recession which came after the, the, the recession of 2008, 2009. Um, the integrity of the single market can't be stressed enough for this country. Um, it, is our economic model, more than any other member state, is based on having access to the single market. The, there is no other uh, member state or indeed OECD country whose economy, whose employment depends as much on foreign companies as, as ours does. So our model is very much based on having full access to the uh, European single market. Any threat to that uh, would be much more significant than whatever relationship, whatever deterioration in the relationship between, between uh, Ireland and the UK, uh, UK and, and the EU. So that is, if, if this is to trigger a, a disintegration, that would be a, um, an enormous risk for, for, this, uh, for this country and this economy. Thank you. Thank you.